Hey, Chris Matthew from Skynet here. I wanted to talk to you about uh, several uh, protocol options uh, that you can use when uh, doing machine-to-machine -machine instant messaging uh, for the Internet of Things. Um, the three protocols that Skynet.im currently supports is a REST API. Uh, you can do that over HTTP or HTTPS. Um, I'll, I'll walk you kind of through it real quickly, but that's a really good option. Uh, all developers at this point know how to use REST, so that's a really powerful way to interact with Skynet uh, devices. Um, WebSockets, kind of the latest trend in, in real-time uh, communications. Uh, we, we support the everything in the REST API you can do over WebSockets uh, using kind of remote procedure call type formats, and uh, I'll show you how that works. Um, both of these are really cool, uh, really simple, fast to you, fast way to use. But um, in the world of Internet of Things, uh, sometimes devices have uh, really spotty communications. Um, the messages could be mission critical that you're trying to deliver. Um, if if you have a WebSocket uh, that's not, if a device is not listening to WebSockets. You know you're going to miss that uh, that that uh, transmission uh, to the device. That's where MQTT comes in. Uh, that stands for uh, Message Queue Telemetry Transport. It's a uh, uh, a standard um, that uh, was initially headed up by IBM, and it's gotten a lot of uh, support and backing behind it. And um, there are three levels of uh, quality of service. Um, supported by this technology. Uh, QoS level 0 means that basically it will deliver the message once with no confirmation. Uh, those are more important type messages that you want to ensure that the device uh, receives or vice versa. The device needs to make sure that Skynet receives the message. Uh, you want to do those over uh, QoS level 1 which are going to deliver the message at least once, but it's going to require confirmation. That way, uh, when the device comes back online or uh, communications are available again, it will receive every uh, message um, that, that was trying to be delivered to it while it was offline. Um, and then level two, uh, Skynet does not yet support. This is doing a guaranteed one-time only uh, message delivery with a four-step handshake. And it's kind of, um, I don't want to say overkill, but uh, I think that's that's something where we're, it's on the roadmap, but it's something that you know adds a lot more chattiness uh, to uh, the API to ensure deliverability. So we stood up this thing called an MQTT uh, message broker uh, on the Skynet network. It's mqtt.skynet.im, and it's basically running uh, uh, Mosca which is an open source uh, project uh, that supports all of these um, back-end data stores, AMQP, Redis, MongoDB, uh, ZeroMQ, or other MQTT brokers. So that's a really powerful addition uh, to the Skynet network. Um, and I just want to make sure you, you were aware of that. So if we look real quickly here, uh, it's this fourth uh, option down. You can check out the REST API on Skynet.im. Uh, you know, it's got all the ways to communicate, you know, look, just the general status of the network, uh, registering, um, unregistering, updating uh, devices, um, and then the big part is uh, messaging devices. Um, so uh, what I use frequently is I'll, I'll, I'll use like the, um, the device query. So you can say, show me all devices that are maybe of type equals drone, color equals black, area equals phoenix, you know, the, all, all of the, the JSON properties are truly dynamic, anything you want to say, and then that will return you an array of UUIDs, which then you can uh, send a message to all, all of those uh, UUIDs that uh, match your device query. Um, and so, so it's a good way for uh, devices to easily be able to connect and uh, message each other. Um, right below that is the WebSocket API, so you can kind of walk through and see what it what it's like um, to uh, manually authenticate uh, your device with the Skynet network. There's this like uh, 
uh, identification uh, dance where you have to uh, verify your, your UUID and token of the device. Uh, but once you're authenticated, uh, you've got full access to all you know all the, the same uh, REST APIs that are available above. Um, uh, now, so that that's the that's the protocol level. So REST API, WebSockets, and MQTT. Um, what we also have are two libraries in our arsenal today that make this really easy. We call them helper libraries. Uh, one is just a simple uh, uh, JavaScript um, uh, file that you can include into your client-side apps. This is great for just like single-page web apps or mobile apps. You can include the skynet.js into uh, your header section of your page and basically interact with all of the, uh, the Skynet uh, APIs uh, on the client side. We also have a really cool uh, Node.js module and it's conveniently called Skynet. Uh, so you can just require Skynet into your Node app and also interact with uh, all of the APIs in a real simple, abstracted uh, interface. So the Skynet.js, here's kind of an example here uh, on the Skynet.im site, you know, where, where you basically just uh, include it there in your header, and then uh, you basically pass in the UUID and token, and uh, it it handles all the uh, authentication dance. It connects, and then here's kind of a demo of all you know all the APIs. You know how you would call them, kind of in in the same remote procedure call uh, format. And uh, same thing with the npm module. Uh, you simply require uh, Skynet, and uh, we'll handle the authentication dance for you. And um, you specify the quality of service. Um, so what I I should have probably mentioned earlier is that. All three of these protocols are interconnected. So if you're just using the REST API and WebSockets, we auto deliver those uh, to MQTT, uh, the broker as well, and vice versa. MQTT messages also get uh, pushed to uh, the WebSocket um, uh, uh, listening room, socket IO rooms, uh, so that you you could have a, a mixture of app applications and we're keeping everything connected. All communications are connected uh, via all three protocols on the Skynet network. So hopefully that's, that's uh, I know it's sharp, but that's kind of a higher level. I wanted to explain just how we're able to take uh, three um, Internet of Things protocols uh, on the Skynet platform, connect them together, and then give you um, two helper libraries uh, to make your lives easier, especially if you're JavaScript developers. Um, but um, uh, you obviously can use REST or WebSockets or MQTT with uh, any programming language and uh, any, any uh, technology on any device pretty much uh, to connect to Skynet and um, communicate with other devices on the Skynet network. So hopefully that helps. Um, let me know if you have any questions.